Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Grixis Reanimator. What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another gameplay video. Before we jump into this one, I have a couple of things I need to address. First and foremost, we did not get a gameplay video up yesterday. Unfortunately, that was 100% my bad. I ran out of time uh, before I was out on my beach vacation with Caitlin. Uh, and so unfortunately, that meant that I really didn't get much time between that and work uh, to actually get a video recorded and scheduled for you guys. So I'm very sorry that we missed yesterday. Thankfully, it will not be a habit. We are gonna push through. We're gonna keep recording because we got this. Second thing, this is a Grixis Reanimator list, which yes, I know. We have already played a Grixis Reanimator list, however, this one is slightly different, but more importantly, it was also presented to us by one of our really awesome community members, Warden Carl. Carl, thank you so much, my friend. I really do appreciate you sharing this list with me. Uh, we'll talk about some of the differences and things like that uh, as we go through, but obviously the basic gist of the list that's a fun little saying, uh, is essentially the same. We're trying to reanimate some really big stuff. We have Grixis colors for the main kind of uh, piece of the deck, which allows us to churn through our deck, hopefully discarding cards along the way and then reanimating them uh, with spells like Graveyard Shift, which is obviously a really nice one. Doing it at flash speed, if we can get there, is really awesome. Uh, but we also have Return Upon the Tide for a total of seven reanimator spells, which that tends to vary a little bit. Some decks are much more heavily focused on the reanimator piece, and in this case, I think this one is a very good inclusion into that list. Uh, and so we're much heavier on the reanimator lists, uh, or the reanimator pieces. We also just have a lot more, as you can tell, uh, a heavy density of very powerful reanimator targets, including Xander, we got Como, we have got Lorehold, we've got Titan of Industry, we've got Toxroll, we've got Jenga Taxis, Olivia, and Sanctuary Warden. All amazing cards for us to, to choose from here. Uh, now, the rest of the deck is very straightforward. We've got some draw and discard options and Prismari Command, Tainted Indulgence, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and Big Score. Maestro's Charm is a really good all-star in this deck. It's a great all-arounder. Uh, Strangle is a nice include just to be able to deal with creatures and planeswalkers. And then, of course, Meat Hook Massacre to deal with the low ground decks. So that's basically it. It's a relatively straightforward list, but hopefully a really fun one. We're going to enjoy this one today, guys. It's going to be a blast. Let's jump right in. And again, Carl, thank you so much for sharing this with me, my friend. I really do appreciate it. All right, guys. So here we are for game number one. The question is, do we think we can keep this? I'm going to say no. I'm going to go ahead and mulligan this down. Uh, I don't love having to do that, but I actually do think this is a better hand uh, for a multitude of reasons, which we'll talk about as we go through. Uh, I'm going to put the Sanctuary Warden back. So first and foremost, we didn't have anything playable in the opening hand. Now, obviously, we could have gotten another land at some point. There could have been options, but we didn't have that off the bat. So uh, this we at least get to Tainted Indulgence very quickly and get at least Lord Xander or Titan of Industry into our graveyard. And then we actually do have the graveyard shift that we can use later on. So this seems like a much better keep despite having to go down to uh, one less card here. I think it's definitely worthwhile. Warden Carl, I'm really excited to try this one out. I think this is a blast. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and do this. Um, I think we just pass here and kind of wait. Uh, we can do this at instant speed, which is kind of part of the nice thing with this deck is that we, we really do have a lot of, excuse me, instant speed options available. Uh, now, whether they land or not, completely different story. This could be a negate, um, could be a lot of stuff. So we'll see what happens. Let's go ahead and try for the Tainted Indulgence now. Let's see what the opponent wants to do, if anything. Okay. Uh, so the question is, what do we discard here? There's a lot of really good options, honestly. Um, hmm. Let's go for the cool play of Xander. I don't know that that's the right play. We drew quite a bit of our, like, action stuff. Uh, like, big stuff. We kind of wanted to get more enablers for the deck, and we really haven't done that. So what we'd like to get are more Tainted Indulgences. Fable of the Mirror Breaker, maybe a uh, big score, something like that to kind of help turbo us into the graveyard and then give us options for that reanimator spell. Unfortunately, right now we're kind of stuck because we only got the one. Uh, and so this could be a bit hit or miss, but that's okay. Uh, we do have an overabundance, like I said, in the deck tech of just purely really powerful creatures. Uh, and so that is worth considering that 
you know, that's probably going to be part of it. Um, I think we actually throw the Den of the Bugbear out there now because obviously we don't actually have a play this turn. <laughs> so let's take the opportunity to get the Tap to Land out of there. Uh, and then next turn, of course, we can Graveyard Shift our way into something. Uh, depending on what they do, obviously we've got really only Lord Xander at this point. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we can get somewhere. Uh, they are going to attack him for one. They did discard a land, which is interesting. Uh, okay. Um, I'm just going to... Hmm. We are potentially running into a negate here, but I'm going to try for it. Uh, I don't expect this to potentially work, honestly. Um, I could very easily see this failing. But it looks like it's going to work. They do discard half their hand, uh, which unfortunately is just a card in this scenario. And then, of course, they could just have like a, an Infernal Grasp or something like that. Um, but this is certainly a, uh, a nice little you know, push in our direction. If they do kill this, they still discard a card from their hand and they still have to get rid of a permanent on the battlefield. So, you know, I mean, it's worthwhile that this is going to at least hit something. Uh, I would love to get an attack in with it, but obviously that's probably not going to happen. Okay, they did get rid of a Blood Chief's Thirst. Uh, so I'm assuming they have another removal spell here that would make the most sense, I think. Um, which is fine. It's not great, but it's fine. Uh, thankfully, again, we did draw another Tainted Indulgence here, so we actually are going to get to kind of dig further into the deck and hopefully do what we want to do here, but uh, it is going to take a little bit of uh, finesse, we'll say. Um, this is going to be a bit tricky. Obviously, we can't block. These do have flying, uh, which honestly would have put us in a better place to have put the Titan of Industry on the field. We could have killed the Meat Hook immediately, uh, as well as blocked either of these two, but... Um, I, uh, I like Lord Xander, man. <laughs> we gotta go for the cool play. Carl, I did it for the cool, the cool points. I hope that's worth it. Um, okay, so they do have this. They are gonna have to sacrifice a, uh, permanent they control. It's probably just gonna be Meat Hook, if I had to guess. Uh, I don't think they want to get rid of either of their creatures here. Okay. Obviously don't love that, but it is what it is. Um, interesting. Let's throw this out for black. Um, hmm. What do we want to do? I think we need to wait on that. Um, let's actually go for the Tainted Indulgence now, though. I know this seems a little awkward, uh, but I think it makes the most sense, surprisingly. Um, we definitely want to discard that. So the question becomes, do we Maestro's Charm now or no? I think no. I think we actually just wait. Uh, and the important thing here is, depending on what they do, we might be able to Prismari Command to deal with something and discard a couple cards to dig further into the deck, uh, which obviously is exactly what we want to do. Uh, and we, of course, do just have this as a backup option to just kind of kill something here. Interesting. OK. So I'm kind of curious to see how this actually goes. Um, I'm going to let them attack first. Let's see where they put these. It looks like potentially on the hive. Okay. So the hive is the scary card. That's the one we don't want to... Uh... Okay, so they are going to get rid of that as well. Interesting. All right, so let's... I really want to get rid of this, but so many of these things are dangerous for us. I think we have to get rid of the Hive. Um, maybe that was bad then to let them attack, but uh, I think we kind of had to to see where they were going to throw the counters. Unfortunately, they are throwing it on the Rafine, so honestly, 100% a bad move on my end, but that's okay. Let's see what we can do. Uh, we do just get to play Tox Roll this turn, which is at least powerful. <laughs> um, Hopefully they don't have a kill spell here, but uh, that was certainly a good power play. Um, I'm sure they've got a kill spell. Ooh, and it's Vanishing Burst. Well, that's not what you want. Okay. Uh, sure. I think they're just gonna get us here. I mean, at this point, we need like a Meat Hook Massacre or something big that can kind of sweep the board. And unfortunately, we just haven't drawn it, right? Like we've drawn a lot of our big spells. We've also drawn uh, quite a number of lands. 
And so we're at a point now where we really just don't have a lot going for us, which is fine. I mean, it happens, um, but we'll see. Um, they are four, five, six, seven. That's exactly it. They got us. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I love that name. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for the game. Let's jump into game two. The brand new Reanimator Proxy Pack is now available through the end of July. If you'd like to pick up this month's amazing Proxy Pack, please visit patreon.com slash it resolves for details. All right, guys, here we are for game number two, and this is definitely a keep. It's an interesting one. Obviously, we are going to have to kind of play with our mana a little bit here, but uh, we actually do get all three colors if we would like it, and Tain and Indulgence into Maestro's Charm into potentially a Graveyard Shift. So uh, I'm actually quite happy with this. Coma is also one of my favorite reanimator targets. I've talked about this a lot, but Coma is so difficult to deal with. If it sticks around for a turn, it is difficult to deal with. Uh, and so we're going to hope that we can actually do that. MTG Yiz is our opponent. Let's see what they are up to. Uh, guys, just as a quick reminder also, uh, we, uh, we've been doing a lot of pack openings and stuff like that on the Saturdays, uh, which are normally dedicated to the binder uh, update series. Unfortunately, the reason we've had to do that is because I haven't been able to get a lot of cards in uh, over the last couple weeks. Now, Thankfully, uh, we actually do have quite a number of cards to talk about on the upcoming ones. So we are filled out for another page. We are going to be back on track for the norm. Uh, and I'm really excited about it because I do really like quite a number of the cards that we have here. Uh, it's going to be a blast. So uh, I do encourage you guys to check that out when that time comes. It's going to be an absolute blast. We'll have some fun with it. It'll be fun. Um, all right. So I think we just pass and see what they do. I uh, don't love that they played this, but oh, that's perfect, actually. <laughs> we get to Prismari Command that, so that's phenomenal. Um, so, we can actually kind of force the issue a little bit here. Uh, create a treasure token. So they are potentially going to have Vanishing Verse. Uh, but I think we're going to do this. Target a player, let's get us, and let's do this. Let's go ahead and kill it. So the reason I'm doing this is one, it slows them down, but two, with that treasure token, what we're actually able to do is go ahead and graveyard shift on this turn uh, into the Como and they're tapped out. So even if they can target it with a vanishing verse, what we get to do potentially, potentially, if they can play it now, it's gonna suck. But uh, if this lands, if the three, three lands, we actually can, yes. Uh, we might be able to save this. Obviously, it doesn't get around Vanishing Verse, I guess, but it does get around a lot of things. So, there we go. We got a win. Instant win. Carl, we did it. That was awesome. Let's jump into game three, guys. All right, everybody. Here we are for game number three, and I think I will keep this hand. It's a little sketchy. It's a little slow, but uh, we're going to do the best we can with it. Also, just as a heads up, we actually have a storm coming in right now, so I'm really hoping we can get this one done. This will be our last game if we can get a decent game in, uh, just because I don't want to to throw uh, or, or basically get stuck without a recording. So we're going to do the best we can, guys. Uh, let's see. Obviously, potentially Boros, but definitely Mono Red looks like, and uh, that's definitely going to be a rough one for us. We're going to want to get some some things in here that can actually deal some deal with all of these little guys if if possible so we'll see what we can do here interesting uh all right let's do this let's go ahead and cast the fable so this is going to help us obviously get the olivia down uh potentially a little bit sooner with the return um and we'll see what the opponent's up to here all right um potentially we do just trade off here i know that might We'll, we'll see, uh, because obviously we could just um, return next turn if we can get the attack in with the 2-2. Two -two. So we'll we'll see. I do like the idea of trading off as much as we can in the early turns, just because um, obviously this is just in general a scary matchup. Uh, they're going to reconfigure. Um, all right, fair enough. Let's see. So let's discard you. I think we'll discard a land as well, just to kind of dig further into the deck. We definitely need to do that, so I feel like that's probably worth it. All right, uh, a ward cost of two. So let's do this first. Let's go ahead and attack. Um, and we might actually do things in a bit of an odd order here, but we'll see. Uh, maybe that's what I want to kill instead. 
Actually, yeah. Okay, so let's destroy a target artifact and deal two damage to something. Let's deal two here. And let's destroy this. So uh, this looks a little sketchy, I know, but uh, we actually do get to pay for this thanks to that. We're getting a lot of things off of the field here, and they're just left with the 2-2. Two -two. Uh, we'll see if this actually pans out in our favor. Not 100% optimistic, but that was a nice little two for one. We still can return next turn, uh, and I'm actually perfectly happy to do that instead of um, doing it this, this coming turn. You have to think too, um, Olivia on her own isn't exactly all that great. Uh, I'd kind of rather have something else, so we'll, uh, we'll see what happens here. Uh, let's go ahead and do this, just to make sure that we do have the double black in case we need it. Um, I think we are just going to have to return here. The Olivia. Go ahead and get her. Unfortunately, again, we really don't have much we can do with her. <laughs> but we do at least have an Olivia on the field. So, let's see. Uh, chances are they can probably just Roiling Eruption or Royal Eruption her. Or just deal with her with a number of other, you know, kill spells, whatever it might be. Um, but still, we're gonna do the best we can. I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, I wish we had anything really to discard with the big score, uh, because the reality is, without it, uh, without something to discard that's actually useful for us, it's not exactly that helpful. This is terrifying. I also, the strangle is tricky because it is sorcery speed as well. That is something to consider here. Uh, that's you know, we do have to be kind of cautious of but let's go ahead and do this um, I'm gonna play this and I'm gonna play this probably should have played that for red honestly, but It's okay. And I'm actually just gonna pass here. The reality is we are up against it when it comes to uh, their damage spells, so we basically just have to give ourselves the best possible options for blocking at this point. They also can just deal four damage to us. There are cards in their deck that I guarantee you can do that, so we have to be cautious of all of this. Uh, and unfortunately, that's not going to be super easy. Um, I'm trying to think what we could draw here that would be super helpful. Um, I mean, Meat Hook Massacre would not go amiss because we could at least kind of deal with some things, but this actually just gets returned to their hand, which is kind of the problem we're running into here. Uh, interesting, they even... Oh, it does, I guess, power this up, so that makes sense. Okay. So we blanked them for a turn. I'll take it. Tainted Indulgence isn't actually that bad. Um... I think honestly though, I just discard both and draw two. <laughs> I know it's not very exciting, but I think we just kind of have to. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's copy this. We're gonna end up losing these, so we kind of need to uh, go for it here. Let's go ahead and attack in. This does give us some treasure tokens, which is obviously helpful. Uh, and this should gain us a little more life as well, which is kind of important for us. If they don't block, we'll see if they actually do. Uh, it looks like they're not going to. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and do this. And here's to hoping. Um, we'll see. They've got one mana available. What could that one mana be? It could just kill our Olivia, uh, which in that case, we're in terrible shape, but... So if they have just, why would they crew this? That seems like a bad idea. Uh, we just get to kill that now. <laughs> so what I was thinking they had is a one mana burn spell. They could kill the Olivia that way uh, and then get us into a position where they basically just can attack in twice, but they didn't do it. Hmm. Fascinating. Very, very fascinating. Okay. All right, so now we know their hand, which is at least helpful information. We don't have to play around quite as much. We do have to play around off the top of their deck, but uh, that is at least a step in the right direction. So let's see what happens. I like it. Uh, we also gave ourselves a little extra mana here, which is useful. Um, yeah, I will just cycle this. 
It's not exactly ideal, obviously, but uh, it's something. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, we kind of need to keep the pressure up while we can. Um, I am just going to attack here, though. Uh, and we'll just... I, I don't think it really matters what we take, so I'll just get rid of that. In case they have, like, an adversary, I guess we take the... Uh... Interesting, they blocked. Double blocked. Huh. I don't know why they double blocked. I don't see that being all that relevant, but okay. We gain a life out of the deal, and we kill one of their creatures. They drew a land, uh, which is great. They're going to go ahead and cycle, or excuse me, channel that away, which is fine. Interesting. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep this up as the, uh, the main option here. I guess we could have also created a copy of it, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and just keep getting stuff out of their deck or their graveyard excuse me they are gonna take the three uh with that in mind i'm gonna play this land uh and that way next turn whatever we draw we can use with the big score and hopefully have enough mana left over to kind of do whatever we need to do um okay yeah we did kind of miss the opportunity of dealing a little more damage there we could have actually copied the hive um if i'm not mistaken yeah uh, and that actually would have helped us out quite a bit, but we'll see what they do. Okay. Nice. Let's strangle that. We're going to gain a life. That's helpful. Let's go ahead and throw the hive at them. Let's spread this out even more. Oh, no. Oh, we have to... <laughs> That's funny. Uh, well, that was a bit of a mistake, but all right, we did it. That was awesome. Uh, kind of an under exciting reanimator option, but we did still reanimate some stuff and it did help us win the game. So I'm very happy with that. We also ranked up. Look at that. Let's talk about this. All right. So again, first and foremost, I just want to say, Carl, thank you so much for sharing this list with me. I do appreciate it, my friend. I really do appreciate you also supporting the stream and hanging out with John on the live stream. I know you uh, have been a big supporter there as well. So thank you guys very much. Uh, this has been a fun one. Um, Grixis Reanimator, like I said, a deck we have played before, but not in this configuration and not with this many reanimator targets. Uh, we were able to get some of those reanimator targets on the field, which was great. Uh, we do, I think, one thing to keep in mind, and this really stands for any reanimator deck, is keep in mind which reanimator targets you can play naturally and which ones you literally cannot play because of mana constraints, uh, whether that be color or amount of mana, that kind of stuff. So as a prime example of that, uh, we could have reanimated the Titan of Industry in the one game. That would have been a potentially better target than Xander because we can actually just play Xander in terms of the mana cost. It's a Grixis card, we're a Grixis deck, we can act actually just play that for the mana cost. We saw that with things like Toxroll as well. Obviously we can just play Toxroll. It's a late game threat, but we can certainly do it. Whereas Titan of Industry, a little bit trickier. We can do it based off a of big score, but it's not as easy. Uh, and so it's just something to keep in mind if you happen to try out a reanimator deck. Keep that in the back of your head. I don't think we made the best decisions possible with that in mind. So uh, try and learn from my mistakes. But regardless, this is a blast. Carl, again, thank you so much. Thank you to all of you guys. I'm sorry we missed yesterday, but we are back, everybody. And I'm very excited to be back. So thank you guys again. I love you all. I'll see you tomorrow.